here is the part two video for enzymes and want to mention that enzymes are extremely specific as in they will only react with the correct substrate and uh, substrate is just another word for you know reactants only the correct one will match with the enzyme and below here is a picture of an enzyme a more accurate model but um you know don't get fined by this this is basically just a huge chain of amino acids you know many 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 and then plus its attachments that it acquired from the Golgi apparatus. Oops, plus the attachments. But for the sake of um, explaining the next example, I'm going to shorten this uh, nice drawing into this. So this here will be my enzyme. So now let's take a look at maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide with glucose monomers, made up of glucose monomers. So here's maltose, and this is glucose with a glycosidic linkage, a glycosidic bond. Now, our body can't readily absorb maltose. Your body can't readily absorb maltose. We need to chop it up into its glucose pieces. You know, chop it up into individual tinier, smaller pieces of glucose. So we can do that with an enzyme. And the appropriate enzyme here is called maltase. So we gave it a pretty good name. And many enzymes end with this um, suffix, ace. So maltase is going to cleave the bond here and give us two glucose. Give us two glucose, which we can readily, which we can readily absorb. Which can be absorbed. Okay, now let's kind of illustrate this uh, a bit more graphically. Okay. So here is our maltose you know, floating around, doing whatever maltoses do. And here is our maltase enzyme. So because they're super specific, this knows that it can fit here or it'll fit without any issue. So again, let me label this. Uh, again, this is maltose and this is the substrate or what fits into the enzyme. Here is a malt ace. This is the enzyme. All right. So now this is going to fit in there really nicely and we're gonna have something like this. There's the oxygen and then there is our nice model. This region here, where the enzyme fits in, we give it a special name, we call this the active site. Call this the active site. And this complex that we just formed, con um, consisting of both the substrate and the enzyme, we call this the enzyme substrate complex. Enzyme substrate. So through a series of steps, this is going to cleave the bonds and we are going to be left with our maltase, you know, unaffected, plus our two newly formed glucose. And we are left with our enzyme. This is still there. We have our products. But this is kind of what occurs during these kinds of reactions. Okay, so the example we just gave you is also an example of a type of reaction called a catabolism reaction. So let me refresh. So this is again maltose. And when we break this up, we are left with two smaller units. 
So this is by definition a catabolic reaction. So this is large in relation to the product, and these are the smaller, smaller products. So we have breakdown of a complex, i.e. the maltose, into simpler ones, i.e. the glucose. But when we break bonds, we also release energy. So energy is also a product. Energy is released. So this is catabolism. Now, anabolism is the opposite. Uh, we take a complex molecule, oh, sorry, we form a complex molecule from simpler ones. So you take, you know, what, what's a good example here? We can take, the example here would be uh, ATP. So we know ATP has, when this breaks down, into ADP plus a inorganic phosphate, this releases energy. But this right here, this is a cata catabolic reaction. To stuff those pieces together, going the other way, we need an input of energy. So we need an input. We need energy input to stuff these two pieces together. There's that part of our definition. And this is gonna jam it into ATP. And since it was jammed, it's not super stable, it has a lot of energy. So if you look on the left side, we have um, simpler molecules, simpler in terms of its size. They come together to form a complex, i.e. a bit larger molecule. Okay, and metabolism, is just the sum of both of these catabolic and anabolic reactions in your body. You know, breaking things down, making energy, or creating things which input energy. So for ATP example, we can do C above. And we'll speak more about ATP later. So some attachments that proteins have, uh, they are called cofactors. And we have two types, uh, organic and inorganic. And all, the, all that definition means is if it's organic, if your cofactor is organic, this means it contains carbon. Contains carbon, which is the letter C on your periodic table. And if it does so, we call it a coenzyme. But it's still an attachment to the protein and it is required for the protein to function. Yes, they're absolutely necessary. They will, enzymes will not work without their uh, cofactors. Uh, if it's inorganic, which translates to does not contain carbon, oops, does not contain carbon, We'll just call it a cofactor. Okay, they are both required for the enzyme to function. And these aren't protein pieces. So what this means is that they are not composed, not composed of amino acids. They don't have peptide bonds. They don't have uh, the variable R group and so forth. And here are a few examples of some coenzymes which are necessary for function. Okay, so how exactly do cofactors help the enzyme to function? Well, in one way, they can stabilize charge. They can stabilize charge. And uh, they can act as electron donors or acceptors electron donors or acceptors. And this helps the enzyme do whatever it has to do to the substrate to make the product. So for today's lab specifically, we are gonna be dealing with starch and we know starch is just a, a polymer of glucose units bonded like this. And then dot, dot, dot. So here is starch, 
we know this is a polysaccharide. Polysaccharide. And to test for starch, we use Lugol's solution, which is a solution containing iodine. So sometimes we can just call this iodine. Now we're going to cut this up into regular monomers of glucose, and we might also have some maltose. So how do we go from, from starch? How do we go from starch to glucose and maltose? We use the enzyme in, uh, located in our body known as amylase. Uh, you can find amylase in your saliva. We also have pancreatic amylase. Uh, just note here that starch is the storage form of glucose for plants. For plants. We call the similar composed structure uh, glycogen in humans. But now to test for uh, this monosaccharide. To test for this monosaccharide, to test for this disaccharide, we can't use a Lugol solution disaccharide. We have to use our second reagent known as Benedict's. So today's lab, you're going to be creating various solutions composed of the substrate, composed of the enzyme, and you're going to see um, how fast this reaction from starch to glucose occurs.